Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Welcome into oh, Center Court. I'm Prim Saripipat alongside ESPN senior writer Greg Garber. You didn't know I was going to sing, did you? No, I really I didn't. A big happy birthday to Roger Federer as he turns the big 3-0. And how else is he going to celebrate it? He's going to be on the court in Montreal playing at the Rogers Cup. Today we're going to take a look back at his illustrious career. Greg, what a, an impressive resume, but how does he stack up to the rest of the tennis legends? He's done very well, thank you. Uh, he's only 30 years old. The bottom line, he's won 16 major singles titles. Okay, that's two more than Pete Sampras's previous record. That's all you need to know. At 30, the most important thing, he's still number three in the world. Number three at the age of 30. The experts say that I talk to, his game hasn't regressed. I mean, look at that right there. He's still flowing. He's still moving well. I mean, the bottom line is he's uh, maybe the only thing he's guilty of, according to Brad Gilbert, is making Djokovic, Nadal, and Murray better players. And no surprise that past the age of 30, it gets just that much tougher to play at such a high level and continue win winning those major titles here. We're looking at a full screen. As you can see here, Rod Laver and Ken Rosewall are tied with four Grand Slam titles past the age of 30. Now, that was in the late 60s and early 70s, a totally different era. Pete Sampras, along with five other players, have won just one Grand Slam title past the age of 30. So, Greg, looking at these numbers, what do you think lies ahead for Roger? Well, I think, the, as, the, as the chart shows you, it's not easy to do it, but it's certainly possible to do it at the age of 30. 18 different Grand Slam champions over 30 in the open era. That's a big number right there, I mean, when you really think about it. I mean, perhaps the best example is Andre Agassi. Agassi won two once he started going past the age of 30. Two Australian Open titles in 01 and 03. Pete Sampras, as you said, had just turned 31 when he scuffles his way into the U.S. Open in 2002, the final. He beats Andre there. And that was the last match he ever played. Federer, I think, uh, said the other day in a conference call uh, that he, he thinks he can win more. He thinks he is still viable on the stage. And what we saw at Roland Garros, to me, proves that. No question he can definitely win more, but we also must consider that at one point he was number one in the world for 237 consecutive weeks. So the question is, has he passed his peak, his prime? I think I would have to say yes, he is 30 years old. Now, one thing that is certain, though, Roger Federer is definitely in great condition. He's in great physical shape. Injuries are always the biggest obstacle in tennis or any other sport for that matter. Now, do you think Federer is any different than any of those other 30-plus-year-olds? I do, as a matter of fact, and, and you play the game so you know this it's the way that Federer plays he's quiet he's efficient he doesn't have a lot of moving parts now think about this Nadal sat out Wimbledon in 2009 he retired from his Australian Open match in 2010 he played hurt at Wimbledon in 2011 what has Roger Federer done he's played in 47 consecutive Grand Slams it's 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 freakish actually that he's been able to stay this healthy with that much stress he's complained of back pain he's complained of leg pain but for the most part he's been very solid and that's the key to winning those big numbers and I think for a tennis player your game also determines your health as you mentioned mm -hmm. he also has a very smooth a very fluid game he's it's not very jarring or very physical and that also helps preserve the body for myself that was not the case I was done by 22 years old now what are all the other experts saying about Roger well I talked to Darren Cahill, who uh, coached Agassiz and Hewitt, uh, he would say one in the next three or four years. Roger, think, we think he's going to keep going for a while. Brad Gilbert, I liked his answer. He said the over-under was 1.5. Now, I know you're... <laughs> How can you the, win half a Grand Slam? Well, because Gilbert is couching his bets okay. on one and two, as, as are you, from what, <laughs> uh, from what your discussion was. Yep. So the bottom line is, he's going to be viable in all four events. Because, he, as you saw when he got to the final of the French Open, uh, no one thought he was ever going to win that one again. I, if Rafa's needs to take him out of play, how can you say that Roger can't win the French Open? More, more to the point, I suspect we'll see him sneak through in Australia, just like Andre Agassi did. Uh, he's fit. He comes out of the box fast. He works hard uh, in the offseason. And the Australian Open is where we see that sort of dividend pay off. What do you think? I'm going to give him two. Oh, okay. I'm a little bit more optimistic. optimistic. I definitely think it's going to be two, but of course his biggest challenges will be Novak Djokovic as well as Rafael Nadal. He is 1-3 and three against Joker and 0-3 oh and three against Nadal. Now, Roger Federer, well, all I can say, the best way to approach old age or getting older is just to simply embrace it. Roger Federer did say that he would rather be 30 rather than 20. He's enjoying this time. He's married. He is a father of twins. Now, we're going to have a very special tribute to Roger Federer, so log on to ESPN.com for all of that, our tribute to Roger Federer turning 30. For Greg Garber, I'm Prince Ripipat. We'll see you guys next time.